Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, we are doing a Facebook Live with a um, proud single mom. I'm Nathan Chan from Proud Fertility. I am the managing director, um, and it's a surrogacy and egg donation agency in Canada. So first of all, um, who are you? Are you a proud what? I'm a very proud mom, single mom. Okay. So a proud intended parent. Yes. And who is this little one here? This is Matilda, and she is exactly 14 days today. 14 days, days. fresh. Fresh. Fresh and out of the oven. Starting getting a little bit hungry, but she's with us. Perfect. She just, just knows, yeah, hungry and tired, all at one. Hungry and tired. Okay, yes. so today we have something really exciting, and this is the Norwegian baby. Yay. Which you brought me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna, we don't um, ever have the opportunity to interview as many intended parents as we'd like to, and we yeah. we found ourselves in the right place this time around, and um, so we're gonna interview a proud intended parent, so you know what their perspectives are, and what their thoughts are, and we'll go from there. So, yeah. um, proud intended parent, you are Proud Fertility's first single mom by choice to be able yeah. to do a video for us like yeah how does that feel and and um yeah tell us a little bit about that like what's your journey what brought you to surrogacy and egg donation things like that i think i intend uh, a single mom is have a bad reputation i think we got um as a mom is such a big wish it's and it's been most of us coming with a big desire and it has probably been a struggle. Mm -hmm. Nothing of this comes easy. So we are very maybe needy a little bit. Like Are it's, you needy? <laughs> well, I think a lot of surrogates and like it has the reputation of being needy that maybe we're overwhelming, that it's going to be too much. Um, and that is maybe the bad reputation that it is. Yeah. So there is a bad reputation with some intended moms, but you absolutely were not like that whatsoever. <laughs> and that's what we got to get. So um, it's not so much about being needy. I think because your whole nature, your, 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 like your, your gender is supposed to carry the baby, carry, right? Yes. And you're now not able to. Um, is there that lack of control or loss of control or how did you deal with that in the journey? It is definitely um, management. You have to go into yourself and have people around you you can talk to and mm -hmm. see if this is, is this reality or like the problems you're taking up or the feelings you have, is they're actually real? Because you have another person carrying your baby mm -hmm. and for finally, maybe it's the biggest dream in this world coming through. Mm -hmm. And then like me had my surrogate in Canada, I'm in Norway and the other side of the world and you're losing totally control. You're lacking. You're not even in the same country. So, but that's the thing, though. Like, even if you're an intended mom or intended parent, and your surrogate lives next door to you, you will never have that control. Never, when you're never not the control. one carrying it, right? So you have to breathe. I did a lot of meditation, a lot of, a lot of <laughs> introvert, and just thinking my surrogate was one of the best persons ever. So I trusted her hundred percent. You want this? Saying hi. Oh, <laughs> hi, Matilda. Hi. Hi. We're making sure that we don't. <laughs> Uh oh yeah. okay so um why don't we take a step back what brought you to surrogacy it has been a long journey it's been 10 years for me with um seven insemination trials with my ex-husband we did a fail adoption that took two years okay so, so adoption ivf IVF, okay. and then i did try to have um kids by myself and then i found out that i was sterile two years ago and that's when i contacted you okay and for my Personal, I sold my apartment and thought that this is the way to go. That my desire for a baby was so big to be mm -hmm. a family, even it's though it's a very costly process. So, as an intended parent, you are you were very fully committed financially as well, 100%. which is a, a big, um, big investment, but it's priceless, really. Oh, you can't, you think so 10 years in making, but you finally are at the finish line 14 days post. Yes, <laughs> okay, awesome. And just amazing feeling. Just okay. amazing. So something about, um, how did you, uh, tell me a little bit about the birth and, and like, were you in the birth room or were you just kind of like waiting out in the parking lot? My, no, my surrogate was really into like saying that she really wanted me in there, in the room with her. And of course I gave her, had to give her space in the very hard times, but mm -hmm. when like the push and everything and the birth was getting started i okay. was in the room and it was just 
I was trying to sit as still as possible in the corner and not talk. Because it was such a big moment and you don't know, you don't want to step on any toes. And you really need to have empathy and you just like, it's such a big moment. I was just, I didn't, kind of starstruck, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and you feel so... Oh wait, so, so you pushed to be in or she welcomed you? She or welcomed how did that me, work? yeah. So we talked about that with the nurses and the OBs before. And she also was very, very clear throughout the labor that she wanted me in the room when she okay. could start pushing and the baby was coming. So that was just magical. I didn't have to. That was totally Renee's Oops. choice. So. <laughs> You're a proud surrogate. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> okay. So, so I just, I would, I would be happy. I was just so blessed to be able to be in the same mm-hmm. room. That was not something that was, had to be. That was so cool. you and your surrogate had a birth plan. So at Proud Fertility or any surrogacy agency for that matter, uh, or any arrangement, like it's really the surrogate's choice. You can, mm-hmm. lit- I told um, uh, this proud intended parent's surrogate, like if you want your intended mom in, tell her to come in. If yeah. you want her out, kick her out. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> when I debriefed with your surrogate, she's like, oh, I kicked her in and out like three, four times. Yeah. <laughs> so, in and out. Yeah, in, in and, and out. out, in and out. But like you're there to support her, but... At the end of the day. So, yeah. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the feelings towards her? Um, when you During dare, the birth or during the journey and even now? You have to have, or well, at least for me, it was huge amount of respect and empathy for, especially very much empathy. And, like, I felt very bad when we were giving birth because I can't do anything to help her. I'm not the closest person to her. Um, you know, she's there with nurses and everything, but you just want to comfort her. And she is in huge amount of pain due to my baby and it's my fault. I felt very guilty. I just wanted to cuddle and nurse her and I couldn't. Mm. And it was very, it's a dual kind of feelings. And it's the biggest moment ever. And I was super, super scared, maybe more for my surrogate than the baby. Like Mm -hmm. the baby, I, you don't want to lose the baby. It's the biggest wish you have. But my surrogate, I knew, and she's a grown person, has her life and stuff like that. So it's more. it was very important for me to secure my surrogate more than the baby. Because mm-hmm. it was, it's life at stake. So mm-hmm. I was just very, I just say I was scared the whole time okay. I was there for. So pre- if you're interested in becoming an intended parent, just be prepared to be scared yes, throughout scared. your journey. <laughs> and fear is a very important um, feeling that I think that a lot of intended parents don't actually plan for. Um, yeah. Would that be a feeling that you think is an important feeling to think about? I think, because you think this is like, oh, this is smooth. We're just going to get her pregnant. This is going to be a smooth ride. <laughs> okay. That is kind of like maybe you're like, after so many years or that wish is so big, you just mm-hmm. put yourself in front maybe. Yeah. And not thinking so much at the surrogate. And then when you get there, you get scared for the surrogate as well. Okay. Because she becomes... if. You're like me. Is she's a part of my family? Okay. Just I really hold her dear to my heart, and you don't want anything to happen. Mm-hmm. So it's a huge sacrifice. Huge, and you just want her to be comfortable. You just want her not being pain, not feeling like, and in the in the whole process, not on the in labor. Mm-hmm. I just I didn't know what el- what to do to feel her, so she could feel good. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to overstep <clears throat> your boundaries at all. As an intended mom, you kind of have to lay on the side and just see how much the surrogate wants you in her life and Mm -hmm. with everything, just the labor as much as the whole pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, I think it's always important to talk about single parents by choice in general, but, Mm -hmm. um, what kind of support do you have, um, in terms of when you go back to Norway or even now, or when you did have the baby, how are you coping? How are you surviving? Well, this, tell us this little one come three weeks before due date. She came how early? Three weeks. Three weeks. Yes. So I was here by myself, <laughs> calling back home to Norway like, she's coming. Where is my support team? <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't here. <laughs> they were not here. So I went home by myself to a small little apartment in... Um, in British in Columbia. British Columbia. Yeah. And thought that this is a time for bonding then. Like, you just have to wing it. You're there with your baby. You can handle it. It just, this is what you've been waiting for. And everything that happened after that was with, you okay. know, your family on phone. Oh, and absolutely. my whole, and my support system is here. We just can't get enough of this little baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Finally, she's here. Yeah. Been waiting a long time. 
You know what? Let's go jumping to <clears throat> the last point. So some advice. Like she, first of all, like advice to um, just intended parents in general and then maybe other potential single intended parents in general uh, that want to become intended parents. Anything you want to say to them? Just don't let anybody else discourage you to keep continue the process because throughout this process whether you're single or you're in couples or whatever you will hear other people's judgments or whatever they think but that comes from their point of view or their point of a bank account or whatever they have mm -hmm. and for myself i was like whatever i don't just this is my route and this is my process and then if you want to tag along and see how this is going to end and be in by the finish line you're more than welcome and if not i don't take your advice <laughs> And it's just more to be clear and also have patience and empathy with you. Not just like, think, I was also like that. I wanted it to be quick, you know, nine months. That is a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but <clears throat> be patient and calm and have people around you and uh, talk to people about that. Not only like, I think that is important to get different views because as intended parents, you get kind of self-absorbed. I love mm -hmm. it. And maybe it's really not about you. It's not. I mean, the baby is for you, you, but it's about not only your surrogate, your egg donor, this process, yes. like just COVID, even that was a huge and, thing yeah. this, in your journey as well, and the, too. The team so, around, mm -hmm. like with you and everybody else in the process, is people around and that actually helping you in the process. And it's about being humbled and having respect for the people that you're teaming up with to have your dream trunk come true. Humility is so important. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, how, I remember talking to you from our first intake. Humility is an important trait. You, yeah. you kept that all along. Yeah. So. I just feel very humble that somebody actually wants to take this task on. I get the chills because it's, um, it was a task that I couldn't do. It gets emotional. <laughs> New mom. She's <laughs> a little tired for two days. <laughs> so, oh. it just... To have somebody that comes and help and that you, that you, I had you in the process, mm -hmm. probably texting you more than I should because <laughs> I needed somebody like help. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just so happy that you are at the finish line and yeah. you were, I think this, I hope this video and what you're saying will reach somebody out there who yeah. might look to your story or even my story or whatever that, um, you know, don't, don't, don't let someone else dictate. Um, yeah. How? What you want to do in life, really, actually. Yeah. Um, are you going to stay in touch with your surrogate or even maybe your egg donor if it was a known donation or what was it yeah, like? Yeah, I would definitely so. do. My surrogate after, up until I think when we both were like in the delivery room and this little human came out, it was like... You called her a watermelon <laughs> earlier. Tell <laughs> yeah. us a little about that. <laughs> There's a watermelon kind of piece is coming out from another person. So you kind of want to have respect for that and be humbled. And be nice. Mm -hmm. Be nice. It's, you know, be gentle. Yeah. Maybe like soothing and just gentle around your surrogate. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other funny story you want to share with us? Which one? Like I'm trying to... I'll give you one. <laughs> so I, I know that the surrogate said that you brought her... I was like, did you get her anything? She's like... I made my intended parent get me watermelon. Yes. And I now did. you're talking about watermelon, <laughs> watermelon. too. It just kind of caught me a bike off guard. Yeah, I did. So I thank knew. you so much for getting her watermelon. Yes, <laughs> I did that. I wanted, and that was a uh, special cappuccino, like chai latte or something with, it was a lot of with oatmeal and stuff. But I'm like, what is this? And what is this? I, I'm not, it sounded very posh. Something about Halloween oh, with the lights off. Oh, yeah. Did you have that story for us? <laughs> what was, yeah. Throughout the birth and the labor, the thirty um, first, all the uh, fireworks were outside the hospitals. We thought this girl is coming to the world with fireworks. But with fireworks, yeah. And then suddenly, three times throughout the labor, the power it was power shot throughout the whole hospital. Nurses, doctors were running around like this power has to get back on. My <laughs> surrogate was like, "What is going on? This is what's happening." <laughs> I mean, like we're only in Canada, right? <laughs> it's a big hospital. Yeah. And the power and the safety power, like, what do you call it? The aggregate afterwards? Yeah. The backup shut down two times after the first one. Lovely. 
Lovely. So I was like, this baby is... This is the major baby. city. It's not like we are in none of it or anything. Yeah, it's... So... I was... The pulse was very high, and I think my surrogate's blood pressure was even higher than it was before we came in. <laughs> oh. so anything and everything can happen, right? Yes. So. It was pretty... At that point, it's pretty terrifying, because in the night... This was late here, nighttime in Norway, and all my support team is sleeping. Yeah. So I was like... And my surrogate is not talkable. <laughs> Oh, so, <laughs> but it all ended good. So yeah. we just. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I think we could is... easily talk a lot more if we missed anything. No, not really. But mm -hmm. congratulations on your thank bundle you. of joy. We're gonna pan thank out you. and make sure we see more of this baby. Yes. Hello, Canadian Norwegian. Canadian Norwegian. Yay. So thank you so much for being our thank first um, intended mom who is a single mom by choice that is willing to come on camera and share. Yeah. She was actually opening her eyes earlier. Yeah. Can I zoom in on her face? You gonna wake up, baby? Yeah. 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 Miss Fussy, is that her name? Yeah, that's Miss. Uh, that's the nickname the nurses gave to her. So she's <laughs> trying to get out, but she didn't want to get out. She had a wonderful time in my surrogate's stomach, so <laughs> not coming out. <laughs> Are you Let's see her ears. Does she have the hairy ears? No hairy mm -hmm. ears yet. But her whole body is full of hair on the back and stuff on the back. <laughs> I didn't even know babies had hair like I know. that in the beginning. But they just kind of fall off. <laughs> Full hair. head of hair. Full head. She's a cutie. Oh, it's cold. Oh. Do not touch me. She got the Latina vibes. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it's full on. <laughs> okay, signing off. Proud Fertility Surrogacy and Egg Donation in Canada.